Hello and welcome back to the Agenda Podcast here on the Blood Red Channel. I'm your host, Edward Kay, and I'm joined today by Matt Addison. And we are coming to you following an astonishing end to the 2022 World Cup. Argentina triumphing over France on penalties. And we will move on to talk about the implications for Liverpool, of course. But Matt, we're going to start with uh, Lionel Messi, of course. I mean, for me, it wasn't a, much of a debate anyway, but is that the greatest footballing coronation we'll ever see? Has he put the debate to end to bed? And do you think he's probably the greatest footballer of all time? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was an incredible final, wasn't it, to, to watch. It was um, it was one of those where it just felt like the, the right time for, for Messi to go and, and do something special, killing Mbappe, kind of reminding everyone, just sort of, you know, he's he's kind of the, the next one, I think. But yeah. Uh, yeah, for, for Messi, it, it was already the case that he was the greatest of all time for me. Obviously, it kind of ends that debate in terms of the, the Messi and Ronaldo thing. They've each got the, the major tournament now. Messi has, has done that and has been really instrumental, actually, all the way through the tournament. They wouldn't have been in the final if it wasn't for him. They wouldn't have won this game if it wasn't for him. The, the goals and, and the way that he's just dragged this team forwards. I mean, you know, 35 years of age, 36 in, in a few months' time to, to still be the best player, one of the best players in the world. I think Mbappe has on an individual level kind of taken over from him at the moment. But you look at you know the, the body of work that he's put in. I just think this is the uh, the moment really that, that crowns it. Like you say, it was um it was a remarkable performance and it wasn't the only one. It feels a, a long, long time ago now that Argentina lost that first game of the, the tournament against Saudi Arabia. And yeah, it was um was a, a remarkable journey from from all of them really. But yeah, delighted for Messi because um you know, for, for everyone like us who, who isn't a fan necessarily of, of Cristiano Ronaldo over him, uh, I think this kind of just puts it to bed really and, and once and for all the, the greatest. There's there's other people as well in that conversation as well as Ronaldo and Messi. But, you know, for, for people of, of our age in particular, we've seen those two battle it out. And I think that, uh, yeah, that, that just puts a, an end to it really. And we uh, we don't need to, to have that conversation anymore, though I'm sure Piers Morgan will try. Yeah, it was the uh, the perfect storybook ending that I know a lot of people out there were were hoping for. And we'll stick with Argentina and the success story from tonight for now. Obviously, Enzo Fernandez, a player there's been a lot of talk about, a lot of talk from uh, Liverpool-related uh, publishers as well. Obviously, there were reports from Argentina um, earlier on during the tournament that there might have been a deal agreed with Liverpool. Obviously, those were only reports and... I mean, hopefully the the price was already agreed, Matt, because him winning young player of the tournament is not really going to help Liverpool there, is it? Yeah, I've been really impressed with him. Obviously, we don't get to, to watch Benfica week in, week out, but apparently he's been been really, really good for them. And I think he's you know been one of the, the better players for, for Argentina, particularly when France were playing poorly this evening. I think you know he was, was one of those that just kind of helped them dominate that midfield. I think it's probably a little bit premature to, to be saying that, you know, there's agreements been made and, and that kind of thing. But, you know, if, if Liverpool are interested and it looks like they probably are to, to some degree, it's really not too hard to see why. I think you know, the, the 120 million euro release clause, I think that's kind of what Benfica are clinging to at the moment. If if he goes in January, I think that's probably what's going to have to, to be paid. But I think probably by next summer, he'll have done one year there. He's only just come in from River Plate. He's you know, clearly one of the most talented midfielders out there and there's not loads of them. I think that's you know part of, of the reason really for, for these massive prices. I'd be surprised if Liverpool ended up paying all of that money for him. I don't think I've seen quite enough, despite the uh, the young player of the tournament, to justify spending the equivalent of about one hundred and four hundred and five million pounds. I don't think I've I've seen that from him yet. Obviously, the the potential is there. He's only twenty one, so he can go on and and do really good things in the game. Obviously, played a, a huge part in in this tournament as well. I don't necessarily think it will take the release clause though next summer. I think if um, if Liverpool are able to to go and, and get Jude Bellingham and Enzo Fernandez, and you know from what we've we've sort of spoken about it, I think you know it is it is realistic. David Lynch reported on Liverpool.com earlier this week that you know financially it would be it would be a possibility for them to to go and spend big money on a couple of, of players like that. So you know it's it's one to keep an eye on. My suspicion for a while has been that Liverpool and Real Madrid, you know, being linked with Bellingham and Fernandez, one will get one, one will get the other. But you never know. It's it's one of those. There's uh, certainly enough talented central midfielders at Real Madrid already that uh, they don't need another one or two. If Liverpool can get both Bellingham and Fernandez, I think that would be would be amazing. It would be completely transformational for the midfield. And I think that uh, award, like you say, it was 
know, one of those. There's, there's probably a few other players who were in that conversation. Bellingham probably being one of them as well. I know England didn't get obviously as far in the tournament, but I think he should be in the uh, the conversation for for the Young Player Award. But uh, yeah, just a, a reminder really of, of how good he is. I, I don't think actually Fernandez had started any games or, or many certainly for, for Argentina before the tournament. I think I'm right in saying he's kind of just sort of come into the the starting eleven during the the time in Qatar and, and has stayed there on on merit. But yeah, certainly one of the uh, the most exciting talents and. Um, yeah, it was was really impressive. Yeah, there's been a been a fair amount of chatter about Fernandez from the start of this season, especially on on the channel. I've heard quite a bit uh, in podcasts and stuff like that, and so he was really one to watch for me in this tournament. But I found myself being conflicted while I'm watching him because every time I watch him, he just looks better and better, and you're thinking it's less and less likely Liverpool are going to be able to get him or going to be able to afford him, especially if, like you say, they are after Bellingham. Getting both does seem a bit unrealistic, at least with. The current ownership anyway but we'll stick with argentina for now and um i found myself in in this final obviously there's been a lot of success in this tournament from teams playing in a low block and with a more defensive style as you do tend to see in international tournaments if a side like morocco wants to go far or some of the minnows of the tournament they are gonna have to play in that style but argentina tonight when they came out of the blocks it was just a reminder of what really high intensity pressing football can do to a side because obviously France just looked shell shocked and it was it, it reminded me of how Liverpool will often sort of come out of the blocks and you know shock opponents like that so do you think it was a good reminder of uh, just how much better you know high intensity pressing football can be on the international stage yeah I've been a critic really of, of international tournaments generally but I think in this tournament as well we've seen a lot of games which which haven't been particularly good but there has been a, a lot like this that the final I think is is certainly the the best one that I can remember in, in terms of you know finals not just in international football but domestically as well they do tend to be cagey you think of some of the Champions League finals that Liverpool have, have played in recently they haven't necessarily been the best of games and you know I think for, for what we saw tonight it was was very much you know end-to-end -end and high energy and high intensity and both teams sort of wanting to, to go for it and loads of quality and, and loads of goals in there so yeah I think it's it's one of those really it's what we want to see from Liverpool moving forwards I think you know, a lot of it over what we see in the next few years will come down to the fixture schedule I think probably the reason that we've not seen Liverpool be at that level so far this season is because of how many matches they played in last season when you think of you know I think we've got one more year of, of the Champions League being as it is and then that'll get expanded talk this week of a Club World Cup coming in so a 32 team tournament once every four years I think in the uh, the summer there's going to be more and more matches and we've got a piece actually on liverpool.com going out over tonight that David Comerford's written for us and he's worked out that you know when you factor in all of the tournaments all of the uh, the games that you know players at the top end say Liverpool and Real Madrid and you know all of the teams that, that possibly could go all the way in the um the Champions League and have you know maybe Club World Cup ambitions maybe would have players that go all the way in these competitions you could be looking at you know upwards of, of 80 85 games a season for, for some of these players if all of these changes that FIFA and UEFA want to, to take place come in so I think that's a, a bit of a concern really we want to, to see all of these games and we want to see all of these players playing their intense football but I think Liverpool is um probably a, a classic example really a real warning of what happens when you play what was it 63 times last season I mean if you're adding another sort of 20 games on top of that potentially in a few years time it, it really is going to have you know a, a real detrimental effect to, to what the, the players are able to come up with but uh, yeah possibly possibly that was was a, a thing in Qatar's favour actually with this being a, a mid-season tournament it, it wasn't you know all of the players at the end of you know playing 50 60 games it was uh one of those where they've maybe been able to rest i think probably messi has, has benefited really from you know being at a psg and maybe being slightly um able to, to ease off a little bit heading into this tournament you think of, of players like him who knew that this was their final tournament they could maybe plan the seasons around it and, and get themselves into to peak condition for, for this rather than you know having got to several finals and and then had to, to go and do it at the end of the season but uh yeah it's it's going to be interesting we want to see football like this but i do have a, a bit of a concern around sort of the increase in games it doesn't look like you know we're going to see less matches being played it looks like more and when that is the case you do start to to worry that maybe games like this will become less frequent but 
hopefully not. And there is still obviously a lot to, to be decided in terms of that. Yeah, certainly a, a daunting time to be a professional player with all these changes going on and potentially a lot more games to be played. But we'll we'll move on to France now. And obviously, disappointment for Ibrahima Kanate. We'll have started with him being named on the bench. I think a surprise to some, but um, maybe a part of uh, him coming down with that virus that was going around the French camp might have uh, played a part in Upamecano starting over him. Did you think you'd be seeing Kanate starting today, Matt? I thought there was a decent chance, but uh, it wasn't a massive shock, I don't think, just purely on the basis of Upa Meccano has played pretty much whenever he's been fit and, and able to, and, and Canate's only really come in when when there have been injuries elsewhere. Rafa Varane missed the, the first couple of games, I think, didn't he? Or, or missed the first one and then came off in the, the second one and, and Canate had minutes there. But I think he's, honestly, I think he's been one of the best defenders at the tournament. I think it's it's really, really strange that they didn't start him. I don't think the game would have gone any differently. I thought Upa Meccano was, was actually really good tonight and, and did, you know, a, a lot of, of good work back there. Varane did as well. Obviously, ran himself into the ground and, and only when he couldn't run anymore did Canate come on. But, yeah, it was uh, it was a little bit strange. I think that the performances would have justified the, the Liverpool man coming into the team and, and being able to, to play in that match. But yeah, I suppose it probably wouldn't have made a huge difference ultimately to the result. I think I think it was a good thing that he was able to, to come on. Obviously, if the game hadn't have gone to extra time, it, it would have been you know even more disappointing for him. Obviously, he's not going to be pleased that they didn't win, but at least he did sort of get seven or eight minutes on the pitch. He's played in a World Cup final now, and you know he can come back to, to Liverpool and use that experience. He's, he's played in so many big matches now, and I, I do think he will go on to be one of the best players in the world. And It's similar to Kylian Mbappe, really. You, you kind of look at the end of, of this game, they'll all be distraught. And, there was pictures of, of Canate on the sidelines, sort of, you know, head in hands and, and not really knowing what to do next. But you look at that team, you'd you'd imagine that Mbappe and you know, players like Canate and, and others in that French squad, are really ensure many as well who missed the penalty. I mean, you know, you, you never quite know and you can never be sure. But you look at some of the names in that team, you'd be surprised if they didn't get another opportunity to play in one of these finals. And you know, if, if France get to the the finals in the, the Euros in a eighteen months time or possibly the, the World Cup beyond that, Canate is going to be there for, for a good few years and I'm sure you know he'll play a, a bigger part then. Yeah, as you say, he did manage to get on in extra time, but obviously not much he could have done to affect the result at that point. I was sort of waiting to write the questions around would they have been better off with Canate starting? Because Upper Meccano had looked shaky at points in this tournament, but like you say, I think he actually had quite a good game tonight and probably wouldn't have change the outcome that much Canate starting but you mentioned the experience he'll take from this he's now probably if you discount the Euros maybe he's probably lost the two biggest finals you can play in in football having obviously lost the Champions League final and the World Cup final now obviously that'll be a great disappointment to him but do you think he'll that'll be sort of a formative experience for him as a, as a young centre-back coming will he be able to bounce back from losses like that do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he, he's got plenty of time ahead of him. Like I said, he's he's one of those players that has really, really impressed me since he's come in. He's been you know far, far better than what I thought he was going to be for, for Liverpool. And there's still loads more opportunities for him to, to go on and impress. I think he was one of the better performers for Liverpool in the Champions League final. As I've said, I think he should have played you know a bigger part in this final, but it wouldn't have made a huge difference. I think if you're a player of, of his level and with his ceiling, I think you've just got to relish these opportunities and, and take them when they come. There will be more opportunities for him in future. I think he'll get better as a result of, of being in these finals. And you know, you think of, of how well he played in Paris for Liverpool. Again, didn't work out for him, but he'll be stronger for, for that. I think, again, similar to the World Cup and the Euros, I think there'll be uh, there's, a, there's a decent chance that he'll go on and, and play for Liverpool in another final. And, you know, it, it just gives you that extra extra bit of motivation, doesn't it? So, yeah, I think all of these players, that the experience, you know, it, it wasn't as if it was anybody's fault. You know, it, it could have gone either way. It went down to penalties. It, it was almost unfair, really, that the game was so good, that the standard of, of football and the quality was so good to to take it down to, to spot kicks, to, to see who wins is, is kind of unfair. But at the same time, it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't anybody's fault that, you know, it, it didn't go their way. And, and Canati, I think, is, is only going to benefit from that. So, yeah, it, it'd, be, it'd be disappointing for him in the short term. But, uh, yeah, possibly it could be could be one of those where he comes back and wants to, to prove a bit of a point. I think you know, Liverpool will benefit generally from the, the World Cup. He's the, the one really that you'd look at, but again, he didn't play a huge part. I don't know how 
how down he can be. It almost maybe works in Liverpool's favour, given that they've lost, that he didn't play a huge part in it. I'd be a little bit more concerned if he'd been one of the, the main men and, and you know played 90 minutes or 120 minutes as it was. But uh, yeah, it's one of those. I'm sure he'll get over it. I'm sure he'll have plenty of opportunities to impress in future. Yeah, plenty more opportunities to impress for him. There definitely will be. Obviously, he's probably going to be battling it out with uh, now fit again, Joel Matip for the starting position alongside Virgil van Dijk once Liverpool come back. Obviously not in the uh, Manchester City game on Thursday. As Jurgen Klopp confirmed, he will be giving all Liverpool players who participated in the World Cup a week off, so he won't be available for that one, I would imagine. But that is all we've got time for today on the agenda. So for now, from myself and from Matt Addison, it is goodbye for now.